Hey guys, my name is Jessie Mew, and welcome back to Adam's Quest. In the last episode, the birth of so many brand new babies attracted the attention of some unwanted guests. Not only did we have a rogue male to deal with, to make some rather short work of in all honesty, but now we have our very first swamp barina looming down over our nests. So this one seems to have picked up the scent of Sarala, who was the very first baby between our beacons of adventure, Meme and Vantakir. So she definitely needs to be kept protected. She needs to be kept safe by Ghost in particular, who was watching over her thankfully when this Baryina spawned. If he wasn't in the way, then I wonder if that Baryina would have been able to claw his way over to Sarala. But since he is kind of the protector of both life and death, he sort of picked up the roles of both his uncle and his mother. This might just be the perfect job for him. Ghost should be the one protecting the natural balance of things, but everything inside him right now is screaming that it's not Sarala's time to pass. She has far, far too many great things to do in her little life, so let's make sure that they can scurry away to safety. Unfortunately, because she's just a little baby right now, she can only move one step out of the nest, so this is literally as far as she's going to be able to get. Then we'll want to find a way for Ghost to move out of the way though, because Meme is going to have to swoop in and do her job. This is her calling after all. She is Anna Meme's champion, so she could probably get rid of the spare Yina in a couple swipes. He only has 14 days remaining on his lifespan, and with two turns of her eight point attack, he won't even know what hit him. So let's have Ghost light up the way for Sarala. We'll scoot him right over here so our creatures will at least be kind of blocking her in between them. Nobody's going to be able to hurt her because she has thorns on her other sides. So let's have Meme swipe at the Baryina, get rid of him once and for all, and then maybe one of our other creatures could come over here and pick up the meat. Mamba might have to be the one because she is very close now. Her babies are starting to grow up too, so they should be safe without her and she knows that Quill is watching over them anyway. So let's have her scoot into the swamplands, pick up that meat, and maybe clear out a little bit of the grass too. That way she'll have an easy way to get back to her family. And meanwhile, it does seem like we have quite a few bunnies hopping around back here, right where we found that mysterious carnivorous plant before. In fact, it looks like the bunnies might be hopping all over this patch of debris, so Firefly must be getting so frustrated with them. With his big ears, he should basically be able to hear anything in that tall grass. All of the bunnies scooting around by their berries. Oh, and a little Dodomingo too? Oh my goodness, I think that might actually be our tribe's very first encounter with a Dodomingo. I don't remember them being on the previous islands. So I wonder if they're going to want to investigate that too. For now, we'll have Firefly go ahead and gather up the rest of the fruit right inside this uh, carnivorous plant. They want to pick that entire thing clean, and then they better scoot away from it as fast as possible just in case it decides to turn on us. So let's have Summer make her way back out toward uh, the rest of the clearing. We'll kind of pick up the grass so these guys should be able to get around much, much easier in the future. We'll have Firefly scoot his way over here too, just so he's not right next to it when the day turns. Because like I said before, I'm not 100% sure what these carnivorous plants tend to do. So we'll be learning right alongside the rest of our tribe. But let's have Quill scoot her way over here to uh, pick up all of her acorns. And maybe one of these bunnies too? You think she could take that one out? There we go. She is pretty strong, so I guess it was uh, meant to be. That bunny that was terrorizing Firefly before hopping through all of those uh, crunchy little leaves has finally been put to an end. And meanwhile, we have uh, our little bluebird twins, our brand new bluebird twins, very, very close to the water side. They have spent basically their entire lives so far just gazing off into the water because Mamba was so afraid of the swamplands that she didn't really want to let them out of her sight. So now they have found the strange creature rising up from the waves, Coral with her water body of course, which means that she's able to breathe quite easily. So I wonder if they would be intrigued by her, as she swims around picking up all of her shells. Maybe they would want to see if they can join her in some way. Roro in particular might want to uh, follow her down the shore, maybe pick up some acorns of his own to see if he can impress her too. 
We'll have Isla go ahead and clean up their old nests though. They won't be needing that any longer and this gives her a good opportunity to maybe consider scooping up some of those poison berries too. We do have one of those bushes right next to our main camp. And since Mamba isn't going to be able to pick them up herself, maybe her daughter would be willing to give her a taste. Now our summer prince, Eclipse, who looks very, very regal with his crown of ram horns. We need to figure out exactly where he is going to go. He has some grand adventures in his mind as well. And since he is a son of the summer shores, he has a love for all things bright and colorful, all things warm and sunny. So maybe he would want to explore the few little patches of jungle that we have waiting over by the ports that we will someday be taking. Now, if I remember correctly, these ports will lead us towards some sort of savanna. So I feel like it would be only fitting if Eclipse was the one to discover them first. Let's bring him down the shore as well. He can wave a hello to Coral as he passes. He can let Quill know that he's not going to wander too far, of course. She is our nest mother, so she would probably be a little bit worried too. Now we have Fig over here, who was guarding the rest of our tribe from the rogue male invader. But now he seems to have made friends with uh, the Crabbit, who was guiding that blind creature in the beginning. So I wonder if the Crabbit is going to guide us now? I mean, I guess that could be the case. We were planning on making a pathway over here with Cricket, and it looks like we even have a little shell to pick up too. One of the Crabbit's many, many treasures, I'm sure. So the Bandit Brothers must be quite proud of you, little Vantakir, for managing to sniff that one out. I don't want him getting too far away from his family, of course. He would be quite worried hearing all of the commotion right across the stream, but we do still want him to do his duty. He'll need to pick up all of these uh, toxic berries while he still can. And we'll have Cricket instead make his way deeper into the grass so he can carve a pathway with a stinky tail. Ghost, of course, is breathing a gigantic sigh of relief right now, now that Sarala is safe and sound. So perhaps we could have him scoot his way over here to uh, maybe consider sending off the rogue male as well. I know he wasn't part of our tribe, but something tells me that that wouldn't matter too much to Ghost. He feels like everybody should get the chance to pass peacefully. That was what his mother taught him. And now that he can let Fig know that everybody is safe over on this side of the island, Fig should be willing to make his way toward his son again. Fig is his defender, so we'll bring him right up here in the grass. And then we'll sniff around for a moment just to see if there's anything worth finding out here. Though so far it looks like the swamplands are very, very bare. It's not very surprising because there's nothing really for the bunnies to eat in there. I think they would only risk uh, getting lost in all of these thorns, so we're not very likely to find too much food for us to eat. But now that everybody is all tired out, we should be safe to skip the day again. So let's see what else is going to spawn on this turn. Is there anything else that's going to come slithering out of the grass to surprise our creatures? So far, so good. It looks like everything might be a surprisingly calm after that very interesting challenge. So I guess that means that Meme and Sarala can return to their family today. They can wave a short little goodbye to the creatures staying in the grasslands, and Meme can try her best to catch up with Vantakir. She will need to have her next baby very soon though. Unfortunately, it won't be this turn because we can't build a nest here. This was where we uh, initially landed on this island. These are our old traveling ports. So apparently they're not a very good place for us to set up any nests. But we can at least have Miam scoot her way down into the ocean for a little while. She's of course in a very, very shallow portion of the water so she shouldn't have to worry about taking any damage. And then we'll have Ghost follow after them too. He needs to catch up with his old friend Cricket. It has been quite a while since he's been able to uh, chat it up with him. So we'll have him scoot right next to him for now. And that'll light up a good pathway for a little Cricket to take. Do you think he should do a little bit of exploring? I mean, he's meant to be part of the harvesting line, one of uh, Vantakir's little trainees. But I feel like he has a fiery nature just like his father. And that fiery nature might just get him into a little bit of trouble. So I think he's going to charge ahead and see what else he can find. We'll make sure that he clears up the grass though so everybody can follow him. We don't want him being too reckless. And in the process, he's kind of branched off from his father because it looks like they're going on complete opposite ends of this barrier of thorns. 
But on the plus side, Fig has managed to stumble his way into what might just be the perfect little swamp home. It looks like somebody purposefully built this nest here so that it would be surrounded by these thorns, making it so nobody could really sneak up on them from behind. Maybe he'll want to call out to Vantakir to let him know that a meme might just be able to use that nest if she can manage to get up here in time. It might be a little bit tricky because of course she's very, very slow thanks to her Bergina genetics and she only has two days remaining on her lifespan. So she might have to set up her nest somewhere a little bit closer to the fringe of the swamp, but that is definitely a good place for us to keep in mind. Somebody will be able to use that in the future. We'll have Sorala go ahead and uh, take on her second gem. You know, I was actually thinking about combining the yellow and orange gems for them. Something to show that she is from the joining of the champions. The joining of our beacons. So I think we'll change her second gem over to orange. She'll have yellow, orange, and yellow as her special combination. Now let's make sure she can catch up to her mother as well, and then we'll visit our creatures in the grasslands again who seem to have left one of these babies unprotected. I think uh, our summer prince may have supposed to have been watching after her, so Mamba is going to have to swoop in and save the day. Of course, she follows Adam's old ways very closely, especially in a swampy place like this so similar to where his journey started. She's not taking any risks when it comes to the youth of their tribe. She wants to see them all grow up and flourish and not get swept away by the birds. And she can also maybe repair this nest too, so somebody will be able to use it in the future as Ladybug finally takes her very first steps outside. So I guess Quill and Firefly might be able to have another baby. They are getting very close to the ends of their lives as well, so this might be one of their only chances. We'll have her at least pick up her meat though, and then she can scoot on over here and uh, hopefully breed with him, as long as their fertility doesn't get in the way. There we go, so on the next turn she'll be able to settle herself down again, and we can see if uh, we have another very, very lucky baby, just like Lady. Her genetics are going to be super helpful too. The poison fangs, the double nimble fingers, she might even want to follow on the trail of our beacons, because I'm sure she could help out Vantakir in his cause. Now as Isla scoops up some of her very first toxic berries, we'll have Coral look around for some more shells in the water. She's kind of just drifting back and forth along the shores at this point, but I'm sure she'll be able to find some sort of food to take back to the kids. Oh, look at this! I think she may have found a, a dead clown koi fish, which is great for her because she can pick that up very easily on the next turn. I think some of our creatures may have only caught the slightest glimpse of that thing when we first landed on the island, so it's something that our children will be very, very impressed to see. And yet again, we'll have Roro try to uh, figure out exactly where little Coral ran off to. I'm not sure if he'd even be able to see her so deep down in the ocean right now. He must be getting very, very curious about her unique lifestyle. Maybe he thinks that she wandered a bit closer to the swamplands, so we'll have him sit down right there while he looks. And now the Summer Prince should be free to do his exploring as well. Maybe his mother would even call him up closer to the grasses over here to let him peek inside and uh, see if he can find that carnivorous plant. We'll move him over to this tile, I guess, because there's too much in the way for him to jump right next to his mother and then sniff in the grasses to see if he can find it. It looks like right now we only have that strange Dodomingo back there. Do you think that would lure him closer too? Maybe it's been skittering around in that debris just like the bunnies from before, and he has those same big ears, so he would be very sensitive to that as well. But it looks like our carnivorous plant may have actually turned into a little sapling. Is that what that is? Or is it just a little bit further in? I'm not sure because I do remember that it was right next to that debris. Okay, that's interesting. Maybe it's just growing back? We did uh, clear out the entire thing so it might have to grow back its fruit. I wonder if there's a chance that it might spawn differently this time. Maybe it'll come back looking to munch on our creatures instead. We're going to keep a very, very close eye on that in the future. But we're going to leave Mamba right next to Little Lady, of course. So we can go ahead and zoom out and skip the day, see if anything else is going to spawn way off in the swamps. 
where some of our most adventurous creatures are waiting. Everything looks safe so far, so these guys should be fine today. But over here, it looks like that carnivorous plant has in fact respawned in the exact way that I feared. So it came back and it's now in that red color, which should mean that it's looking to munch on one of our creatures and unfortunately, both Summer and Eclipse are right next to it. This is not good. So naturally, I feel like Summer would yell out to her son to jump out of the way. She smells something very, very peculiar about this plant now. So she wants to make sure that he's out of harm's way. And there we go. It looks like she has been taken by this thing. Oh no. Well, luckily, I mean, her son is very, very strong. So he might be able to get her out. He has a five in attack strength. So let's cross our fingers and hope that it's going to be enough. We'll bring Firefly right over here to light up the way for him. Oh my goodness, and now somebody has a leech? Well, it's probably you, little Coral, but we're going to have to uh, help you out in just a moment. We have a desperate, desperate situation on our hands. So jump back in that tall grass eclipse, and let's see what sort of damage you can do. He can thankfully attack it, so he is strong enough. But is one attack really going to be enough? No, it's not. It doesn't really look like we have a way to see how much strength it has left. And poor Summer is paralyzed inside. It is literally eating her alive right now. Okay, Quill, you might have to swoop in after all. I know you were planning on having your baby, but we have to save your tribe mate. So jump over here as the Dodomingo comes out to investigate too. Are you going to help us out, little guy? You could use that giant beak to peck away at this thing. And we would be super, super happy if you could. Oh, Summer, there you go, little one. That was a very scary situation. Thankfully, it looks like we saved her in time, so she doesn't have uh, any damage taken off of her life. But that's sure to leave some mental scars on her at the very least. She thought this thing was so safe because she did just gather food from it before. But she's lucky that she noticed that scent in time too, or else Eclipse may have been the one who was taken instead. So I guess she can uh, scoop up the meat-eating plant again? Maybe? I mean, she can attack it, but doesn't seem to be doing anything, so maybe she's just, like, hitting it in frustration right now. We'll bring her down to the shore so she can rest again, so she can soothe her mind with the gentle sound of the waves. She did want adventure, though, and that is exactly what she's found. She may have just bitten off a little bit more than she can chew. Surely, after all of the commotion, Mamba would want to investigate as well. Make sure that everybody in her tribe is okay, even though it's going to bring her very close to the swamplands that she's so afraid of. They'll need all the help that they can get, though, just to clear out the grass around this plant. That way, we'll actually be able to see when it grows back. That way, we won't risk setting our creatures up right next to it again, so that they'll uh, get swallowed up in the process. But Coral does have that leech, so let's have her scoop up her fish, and then she'll make her way back up to the shore right where our Roro has been waiting for her. He can scoot on over here and pick that leech right off of her, so she won't be uh, taking any damage on the next turn. And look at this. She has literally brought every single fish in the ocean right up to the little babies. I guess you could say that she's showing them what they're missing. Maybe she's even hoping that one of them will finally join her. She knows exactly where all of those little water-breathing plants are waiting. So I wonder if she'll be able to lure the babies away from their mother in time before Mamba returns from clearing out the side of the island. That way they can't be stopped. Lady, on the other hand, is just more concerned with finding food for her family. So we'll bring her over here so she's right in between some of the berry bushes. In fact, if she sets up on this tile, she'll have so many berries to pick up. We might just do that on the next turn. Now we need to bring Meme up to the shore so she'll be able to have her baby because this is now her last turn. She took care of a very fearsome predator while she was uh, pregnant with this baby though. So let's cross our fingers that that means this one will be born in her image. A brand new champion for Animeme to follow. Vantakir in the meantime has a couple extra turns remaining on his life. So he'll at least be able to meet this newest little baby. We'll have him stay by her side too, so she'll be comfortable on her last day, as we bring ghosts nearby to watch over this family. Having the guardian so near should be enough to put their minds at ease, because they know that he is very devoted to his job. He's helped this family so much in their short time on this island so far, so it's pretty fitting that he's the one to stand by them now. So with the thorns in their way, we'll end all of their turns right there, 
and now it's just Cricket who's still making his way deeper and deeper into the swamps. He seems to have come to a, a little roadblock in his path, but luckily it looks like he can scoot his way around and get out to the shore. And that'll bring him really, really close to that jungle tree and the stinky fruits as well. I wonder if that's actually what's uh, luring him in that direction. So far, it looks like there's nothing particularly nasty that he needs to uh, watch out for, but the poison fanged creatures aren't the best at smelling. It would really be better for him if he had somebody with a big nose, like his very good friend Ghost, to help guide his way, but for now, he's going to make do with what he has. So just a couple more steps and then he'll be out on the beach. And I think that's it for this turn. So let's go ahead and skip the day one last time to see if hopefully Meme is going to be able to pass on her very strong genetics to her baby. Oh my goodness, I think he does have the Baryena Claw. Excellent, so that's a really good sign. The Baryena Claw, the big body. Unfortunately, no ram horns, because his sister inherited them instead, and the shock of it all seems to have made our little crabbit friend pass away, so we'll have to have somebody scoot on over there to pick that up pretty soon. But at least Kukirkir will be able to help us yet again pick up all of those poison berries, because he does have the poison fangs to do so. So I think in the next episode, we will hopefully be making our way right over to this jungle tree. We'll see if there's any more carnivorous plants for us to worry about too. We need to scoot you guys away from this thing because it's still very, very red. So we'll bring Eclipse down to the shore. We'll have Quill make her way over to her nest so she can have her next baby with Firefly on one of his very last days too. This family may have been small, but they've done a wonderful job keeping us safe so far. So maybe we'll have to see if some of those big-nosed creatures can join our tribe over in the jungles. But for now, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Bye, guys!